Just 10 cents a day helps fund local programs like Scenic Stops, Northwest Ohio Journal, and BGSU Brain Game. Watch, connect, explore. We're in Deep Picking Company in Bucyrus, Ohio, and this is a copper kettle factory. The building was built in 1873 for $1,675. They started making apple butter kettles in 1874. So we've been making apple butter kettles in this building for 139 years. Nobody in Ohio made apple butter kettles in the 1800s. So the only place you could get them was Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There was a German Dutch settlement there and they made the copper kettles. So the Pickings had a hardware store and they wanted to sell the apple butter kettles. My father started working for the family at the hardware store. And then he decided that he liked the copper kettle, kettle idea better than the hardware. And so he moved his interest into this builder and to this activity here. We start with a flat sheet of copper, and then we use a dovetail clamp. We use brass shavings, borax, and water, and we put that down the seam, and we light the forge, which starts around 1,300 degrees. That melts the brass through, and then we hammer that. We're the only company left in the United States that hammers the whole kettle, and it's called planishing there. And the planishing hardens it, it brightens it, and we make timpani shells for most of the major orchestras in the United States and being hard copper, it gives them a deeper bass tone. There's no other place in the United States that does it this way, so if you have, want to learn, you have to come here, and you have to be apprentice, start you out uh, a little bit at a time, and it takes around six months to a year to learn the whole craft, but you're not a coppersmith until you can start with a, a piece of copper and work it all the way through and make a kettle, then you become a coppersmith. Heritage, as far as this business is concerned, began when I was born, when my father and mother were dragging me down here while dad worked at night, and that sort of thing. So I feel a sort of home in this particular place. And the thing I like most is the men that I have working for me. Well, Helen's father, I worked for him for five years. I came here and he was hiring apprentices. So. Uh, I was here for 90 days and then they asked me to stay and I've been here ever since. My father had lots of friends and, the, and people admired him a great deal and so people got to knowing him and that was important. He sat here and when a lot of people came to see him because they liked him, they liked what he did, he, they loved the elephants, they loved his response to them. The elephants were the history of my father, who as a kid loved elephants. And a town like this, a little service would come in, there he was behind the elephant or around an elephant. And uh, then he just got so, when, as he got older, he would seek out circuses that had an elephant. And then he would give the circus owner some money and he would ride the elephant during one of the, one of the parades around the circus tent. He would ride that, and was doing that when he was over a hundred. So he, you can see, he kind of liked what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, he loved it. This is part of a lost art, and if this goes out of business, then you'll, there'll be something missing. The candy companies won't have the copper kettles there and uh, the attrition will die there. So if we keep people interested in it, we can keep this craft going for generations to see all the time. It doesn't make any difference to me if I sell a lot of things. If I sell few things to people who really like it and leave and want it, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's it. The place is like stepping back in time. So by coming in here, you're gonna see something that you won't see anywhere else. 
Scenic Stops is brought to you by WBGU-TV. Support great local programming by giving now at wbgu.org slash pledge.